Well, China has been leading the charge on the development of clean energy technology. Lord Adair Turner is the chair of Energy Transitions Commission. Well, there's a clear focus coming out of the plenum on building China's self-sufficiency. And part of it you have to read, I think, within the context of a, a much more troubled world, a competitive world, a geopolitical rivalry world, and China basically saying they want to have self-sufficiency in a set of technologies and leadership. Um, part of that, of course, could be very good for the global uh, energy transition, because if China reinforces yet more its investments in core technologies like solar PV, uh, uh, batteries, EVs, uh, wind turbines, electrolyzers, that will drive down the cost of that, uh, improve the performance, and that will be available to the rest of the world, reducing the cost of uh, the energy transition. The flip side, though, of course, is that the more that China talks about self-sufficiency in a whole series of technologies, the more you're likely to get places like Europe saying, well, we don't want to be entirely reliant on China for these technologies, so we've got to build some element of self-sufficiency alone. If that goes well, it would mean Europe investing alongside China, and there would be, you know, one plus one equals more than two. Uh, if it simply becomes protectionism, it can increase the cost of the energy transition. So you can read the implications of the plenum statement uh, as having some positive potential for technological development, which is good for the green transition, but some dangers that we are all across the world in a process of increasingly focusing on self-sufficiency rather than the benefits of trade. Well, given that, let's explore further the possibility of uh, self-sufficiency or further protectionism. Uh, I mean, how do you see China's potential um, for cooperation with the rest of the world on, on those key global issues? Well, look, the crucial thing at the moment on climate change as a global issue is really the relationship between Europe and China. I mean, also, I think, to a degree, I India and Brazil, but I would attach a whole very high importance to Europe and China. The simple fact is that the US has decided that it's not interested in climate change. Indeed, if anything, it is deliberately trying to undermine other people's efforts to pursue climate change action, which we saw last week in America deliberately encouraging uh, a delay in the IMO debates about carbon pricing. So in that environment, uh, what the EU and China does on uh, climate is very important. And I think we have to find a way to work together as best possible, work together to encourage each other to set stretching uh, climate targets in a sort of, if I'll do this, you'll do that uh, type negotiation. And I don't think that's going perfectly at the moment, but we try to need to try and get that dynamic going. And then I think we also need Europe to develop uh, a nuanced point of view towards China's dominance of the clean technologies. Europe is not going to be willing to rely on China for all its solar panels, all its EVs, all its batteries, all its everything. Uh, on the other hand, it shouldn't be flipping into a deeply protectionist mode. And there are a set of intermediate a, a policies possible, which include encouraging Chinese investment into Europe. But there needs to be an engagement on those trade issues. And then a third thing that there needs to be between Europe and China in particular is helping to unleash the flows of finance through, for instance, all the different development banks that there are, whether they be the EBRD, the Africa Development Bank, uh, the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, to make sure that uh, lower income developing countries are able to seize the possibility, the potential which has been created uh, by the collapsing price of key technologies such as solar and batteries. I think, for instance, that Africa is now looking at an enormous opportunity to rapidly develop electricity systems in an entirely uh, green, zero carbon fashion uh, right from the beginning could be hugely beneficial to economic uh, development, but it depends on flows of capital from outside because the African savings rate is not sufficient for it to uh, drive all the investment that it needs for itself. So I think there are a variety of ways uh, in which Europe and China in particular need to be as best possible 
uh, in this rather troubled world, working together on these issues of climate change.